Ever since this little blue 1U box showed up in my server rack, you've all been asking what in the world is my plan for it? Am I going to build a PBX, or do I have some other plans in mind? I have some other plans in mind. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. Like I said in the intro, today we are finally going to build something inside my Sangoma Free PBX appliance. However, like I said in the intro, it's also not going to be a Free PBX appliance anymore. It may say Sangoma on the front of this, but inside it's just rocking standard x86 hardware. It's got a Celeron J1900 4 core 4 threaded CPU at 2 GHz, as well as 4 GB of LPDDR3. And if you all are wondering what this little knob on the front is here, this is a fan controller I installed because there's honestly no reason in the world to run two 40 millimeter fans at 6,000 RPM to cool a Celeron J1900. Those run passively inside of Chromebooks all the time. So why am I not building a free PBX appliance inside of a box that was literally purpose-built to do so? Well, because you can run free PBX on any standard virtualization hardware, and I have a whole stack of those out in the garage. Rather, I'm going to take advantage of the low-power CPU inside of here, as well as the built-in VGA output, and build myself a KVM appliance to manage any server and virtual server inside of my server rack. To do that, I'm going to be installing Guacamole, a web application host that allows you to connect to any remote desktop, VNC, or other remote management service and access it via any HTML5 browser. Essentially, this box is going to become a web server that I can access from anywhere in my house or even remotely if I choose to, as well as a local client for the KVM console out in my garage thanks to its VGA output. I'm going to start out by installing Ubuntu Mate on this server, which is a very lightweight version of Ubuntu, and should still give me a pretty reasonable desktop experience on the Celeron J1900. Once you have Ubuntu Mate installed, it's time to start installing Guacamole, but there's one service that we need to install first, and that is a remote desktop client. You see, Guacamole doesn't actually host the RDP, VNC, SSH, or any other remote protocol. It simply bridges the web server to the protocols that are built into Ubuntu. While Ubuntu may come with pretty good clients for VNC, SSH, and Telnet, its remote desktop protocol is a little bit lacking. So we're going to install FreeRDP2, an open source remote desktop protocol client that will allow you to connect to Windows boxes. And now we come to the part where you're going to enter a whole bunch of stuff into the terminal. But relax, I will have a link down in the video description so you can just copy and paste everything. First things first, we're going to add the repository for FreeRDP and then run a sudo apt-get update to make sure we have a full list of packages available. Once that's done, we're going to install FreeRDP2-dev and FreeRDP2-x11. Then just for good measure, go ahead and run a sudo apt-get upgrade to make sure everything in your system is fully up to date. Next up for the Guacamole install. Now you could go to GitHub and compile this yourself. However, I've also found a very handy script that does all the hard work for you. So we're gonna go ahead and download that and do it the easy way. First up, we're gonna wget the guac install script and then chmod plus x to make it executable. Next up, you just need to execute guac install.sh. This entire script will handle everything for you with the exception of passwords and a couple of optional installs. The first couple of questions refer to MFA or multi-factor authentication. This is a security system where you download a TOTP or Duo app on your smartphone, scan a QR code, and then enter a six-digit code to be able to log into a session. As I'm not going to be opening up this service to the web, I'm not going to install that in my home server, as I don't want to have to have my smartphone there every time I want to RDP to a client. However, if you are opening this up to the web, it's not a bad idea. Finally, we just need to configure passwords for MySQL and root access, and Guacamole will finish compiling itself. Now this process does take a little while because it is compiling guacamole from source, especially on a J1900. Perfect excuse to go take a break and finish your beer. And a good one that is too. Now that you are completely caught up with me, I'm going to go ahead and go install this in my server rack and we can get to configuring guacamole.
So we've got the server all racked up and up and running, and now it is time to start configuring Guacamole. Now, as it is just a web server, you can access it with any web browser. So I'm gonna open up Firefox here. We're gonna go to HTTP colon slash slash, enter the IP address of your server, which in my case is 192.168.1.168 colon 8080 for port 8080, forward slash guacamole. You should be greeted by this login page right here. And the default username is guacadmin, and the password is also guacadmin. As we haven't set up any connections yet, your home screen is going to be blank, but there's a few housekeeping things to take care of first. So we're gonna go up and click on your username and then go down to settings. The first obvious thing to do is to change your password, as you should always do on all brand new services. So we're going to go to Preferences, and under Change Password, we're going to enter Guac Admin, and then enter your new password. And then go ahead and click Update. If you have any other users you want to add to the server, you can go ahead and go over to the Users tab, and then click on New User. This is where you will configure a user and their access rights within the server. I'm going to go ahead and create a new user right now called Craft. And down here under permissions is where we set what access this user will have. In this case, I'm just going to set change own password as this user will only have access to remote into clients. It won't actually be able to administrate features inside of Guacamole. And if everything looks good, go ahead and click on save. Next up, I'm gonna set up our first remote client. So I'm gonna go up here to connections and say new connection. I'm gonna start out with a pretty simple one. We're gonna set up a new SSH connection to my Pi-hole server. So we're gonna name this craft pihole the protocol is going to be SSH. Scrolling down to parameters is where we actually set up the connection. So under hostname, I'm going to type in craft pihole. Alternatively, you can just enter the IP address of the client you're going to connect to. Under authentication, we're going to enter the username and password from our pihole server. So in my case, it's administrator and the password that I use. Under display, you can set a number of different color and font options. In my case, I like going with the green on black for that nice matrix hacker look. And we're going to do nice and small, so a font size of 12. There are a number of different options you can set here as well, such as disabling the clipboard or even recording your screen session. But for now, we're just going to leave everything at the default, and I'm going to go down and click on Save. Once you've saved it, it should show up under your Connections tab right here. But to actually connect to it, you need to go back to the home screen. So we're going to go back to our username and then click on Home. Now that you're back on the home screen, you should be able to see your brand new SSH session. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that, and it should automatically connect me to a new SSH session on my Pi-hole server. Since I entered the username and password into the settings for this connection, it will automatically log me in. However, you can also have it ask you for your password every single time if that's an option that you want. And to get back to where you were, you can just exit the session as normal. So if we type in exit, it'll ask me to go back home. Now that we know our SSH is working, we're going to go ahead and create one more remote session, and that is an RDP session. So I'm going to go back up to my username and go down to settings, and then go over to connections. I'm going to click on new connection, and we're going to create a connection to my PRTG server, which is a remote network monitoring solution. And by the way, make sure you're subscribed because I do have a tutorial on that coming up shortly. So we're going to name it craft PRTG. Under protocol, I'm going to select RDP for remote desktop. Then we're going to scroll down to host name, and I'm going to go ahead and connect by IP address this time. So 192.168.1.215. Once again, I'm going to enter my username and password. And if this is a domain join machine, you can go and enter your domain name right there. Now there's one very important checkbox for a lot of environments that a lot of people miss, and that is the ignore server certificate. We're going to go ahead and check that box right there. In a lot of business environments, you might have a certificate signing service inside of your network, in which case it validates on both sides of the connection that the connection is valid and secure. However, for home, small business, or even sometimes enterprise, shame on you, you don't actually sign certificates and have them shared by a number of clients, and you get a pop-up message that warns you that the certificate could not be validated. It's perfectly fine. It is still a secure connection. It just wants to let you know that it hasn't been checked through all of the different levels. And in this case, if it doesn't get a valid certificate, RDP will actually fail to connect inside of Guacamole. So you need to ignore the certificate for the connection to actually work. Scrolling down here just a little bit more, you can see there's options for display, sharing clipboard, all that kind of thing. I'm going to leave pretty much everything at the default. I am going to enable all of the performance settings, though. That is enabling the wallpaper and smooth window scrolling and maximization, just to kind of give a little bit more of a smooth feel to the experience. And if everything looks good, go ahead and click on Save. And again, to connect to it, we're going to go back to our homepage. So I'm going to click on my username, go to Home, and then I'm going to click on Craft PRTG. 
Again, since I entered my username and password, I am automatically connected, and here is my remote desktop session. And again, to disconnect, just end your session the standard way. That is going to the Start menu, clicking on the Power button, and then clicking on Disconnect, and it kicks you back to your home page. So, as you can see, Guacamole is a pretty great tool to keep around in your home lab, or even in a business environment, to keep track of all of your remote connections. In my case, it is doubly useful, as I can access all of my remote connections from any web browser here in my office, or I can walk out to the KVM console in my server rack and access it there. Speaking of, let's go ahead and walk out to the garage, and I'll show you how I plan on using it on my server rack. So as you can see here, I've got the server all racked up here with the VGA, USB, and network connection hooked up to it. Now, ordinarily, the server can run on a virtual machine and you can connect to it via the web. But because I'm running this on Ubuntu Mate, I can actually take advantage of the GUI interface in the OS and load it up on my console here. So let's take a look at that. Go ahead and pull my console out right here. And we'll log in. Once I log into Ubuntu, Firefox is set to launch automatically into a full screen window and the homepage is set to guacamole. So I simply have to log into that and then launch any remote session I need from there. Now that I'm on the guacamole homepage, I can simply launch the remote client I need to access. And when I'm all done, go ahead and lock the session and it's nice and secure. So overall, I am definitely thrilled with the way this whole project turned out, and it gives me a whole lot more functionality both inside my home lab and down in my office when working on my virtual machines. Now there's a whole bunch more configuration inside of Guacamole that I didn't get into, such as setting up different users and groups with specific access inside the server. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them. On your way down there, make sure to drop this video a like and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. Follow me on Twitter at Craft Computing to keep up with my daily shenanigans. And if you like the content you see on this channel and want to help support me in what I do, consider joining the Patreon or Float Plane. Links are down in the video description. As a bonus, you'll get exclusive access to my Discord server, where you can chat with myself and join the awesome ever-growing community over there. Thank you all so much for watching this one, and as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. Beer for today was sent in by patron the Dalai Lama, and it is the Rohrbrack Brewing Company Scotch Ale. Uh, a sweet, multi classic, clocking in at 6.9%. Boy, the color on that is just right. Boy, that is crystal clear, but very, very dark. Like, you can see everything through it. There's no cloudiness at all, but it does not let very much light through. Not quite as malty on the nose as I was expecting, but it does smell very good. Okay, that's pretty good. Ooh, that is smooth. Oh, very, very smooth. Again, not quite as malty as I might have hoped for, but all the right flavors in there.